Good evening everybody and welcome to my new tutorial. The time is 9 10 p.m. and I want to do a C sharp tutorial, so let's get started. So if you're if you don't know what this tutorial is about, you need to really go and visit the other tutorial. But because the other tutorial showed you how to install it and get everything prepared. Now I am showing you how to actually use it properly. Um, I gave you a basic one last time. So load it up and you should have pretty much the same screen as me. You won't have recent projects you might, you never know, I don't know if you've been experimenting. But the first thing we're going to do is go up and hit new project or we're going to go file, new, project. So I'm just going to create a Windows Forms application and I'll name this, my well, YouTube Tuts. Just like my Unity series, Unity Tuts, because hey. So when we load it up you'll see that we get a basic form now I discussed all the, what everything is in a rush last time but now I'm going to really drill down to what everything is so the toolbox here if you don't have it go window and it should be okay go view toolbars other windows toolbox there we go view other windows toolbox right there it's a weird place to put it usually it's in windows but hey so toolbox and you'll get this thing here if you haven't got a long list like me, close all these ones down here and scroll up to the top and open the top one. What the toolbox is, oops, get back to the top. There we are, is a massive list of tools you can use in your project. If you don't want if none of them tools you don't want to use, don't worry about it. They don't talk take up any space in your app until you drag them out. So if I click a button, you can either click it and then drag it, which is a good way, but I don't like it, I just prefer to click and drag. And it creates it. Now it's got space in our project. So there's a button. That's all it is. Really simple. There's all them. If you don't know what a button is, you probably shouldn't be watching this tutorial because that's. Yeah, don't watch this tutorial if you don't know what a button is. But yeah, so we have a button. Easy enough. So what we're going to do is have another look at the form design view, which is our middle screen here. I wish I had a little drawery tool. So form design right here, this is where you actually design what your GUI, graphical user interface, looks like. So it's GUI or GUI, whichever one you want to say, I mix between them both. So you can click on different things and it's totally draggable, so you can drag things on. Buttons, you press the delete key to get rid of things, delete, easy enough. The bottom thing you have, if it's not the same as mine, just go up and find it. Form design should be there automatically, otherwise go view other windows and something else not there. You need to open a project if it's not there. Error list, this is where all your errors are going to come. So as soon as you get an error with your programming or something's gone wrong, it'll show in here. So number of errors, zero. Number of warnings is zero. Warnings are basically saying, you've done this and it works, but you probably shouldn't do it this way, do it this way. Or like if you've created a variable and you've not used it, it's using up RAM you don't need to do. So it'll say like, you've created this but you're not using it, do you want to perhaps get rid of it? And messages is anything you tell it to print out yourself. We'll have a look later. Properties up here is basically every single detail of your whatever you've clicked on. So if I was to click on myself, in here you'd see height, name, last name, accent, locations, everything. Just like that and it's the same with anything of here. So if I click a button and you'll see the properties change, it's not a massive change like they've all got text, they've all got name, they've all got size, but some things have changed whereas the button has got flat appearance and I don't believe the, the form actually has flat appearance as you can see. So they are different but they all the same thing as well. So, let's get started, because I've showed you pretty much everything you need to know. One more window you may ha or have up default is Solution Explorer. And what this is, is it lets you see whatever you've got in your project. So it lets you see all the files manually. So you can see we've got Solution YouTube Tuts 1 project. The reason it says 1 project is because you can open up multiple projects. So if you've ever opened a Word document, imagine opening multiple documents. Open notepads, multiple notepads multiple windows so you can just my computer my computer that's all you're doing multiple document multiple things YouTube Tuts is the name of the pro project so we created YouTube Tuts you don't need to worry about properties or references because we won't be going into them for a long time form 1 is your actual form here this is the main form and it's called form 1 easy enough just leave it at form 1 for now because changing it 
if you don't know where to change it, it goes wrong. Form One Designer is the code behind our form. So if we just double click that, you'll have a look at it. This we won't be playing with a lot. But if we click the plus, you can see it automatically generated this code. So this code here is for the button we just created. And this code here is for the form. And everything else is just standard in, to make it work. So you can see we've now got two tabs up. I'm just going to cross off the designer. Easy enough. And the star stand next to it means you haven't saved yet. So if we save, it gets rid of it. Control S to save. Form 1.res is basically the images inside your uh, thing it stands for resource and it's the images inside your design we don't have no images or strings or anything so we don't need it and program CS you don't need to worry about either so let's actually do something because I'm bored of talking going over the basics now so let's have a look at something fun so if we click the button and drag it down I'll just put it at the bottom I don't know what we're gonna do yet we'll have a find something come so we've got a button I don't want it to say button one an anymore there I want it to say hmm submit it's a cool word so if we click it, we're going to go into the properties here, and we're going to find the text value here. And we're going to rename it, the little box next to it, to submit, and then just press your enter slash return key. And now it says submit. Easy enough. So we, if we click the green button, it'll run. It'll work. It won't do anything. That's it. You cross it off, it disappears. Don't worry about your background changing it will. If it if when you cross it off it doesn't change back, look for a blue stop button up here and click it. If not go debug, stop debugging, it will be in here. It changes. So let's rename what the form says here. So instead of form one, let's call it uh, main menu. And you can have spaces. If you want more room to type, click there's a little box that will sometimes appear up next to it. So you can just click that. Don't be mistaking name for text. Name is completely different and we'll go into that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is drag a label out. And if you don't want to know what a label is, all it is is text. That's it. You can't click it, you can't do anything with it. Unless you program it in, obviously. But text is text. It's easy. So up here, I'm just going to change it to... Hello and welcome. See, there's the little box. So we click it. Hello and welcome to my, well, the YouTube app. Here, you will be able to see what YouTube has gotten up to. And you can see, if we click off it, it fills it on, but it's off the screen, so that's not what we want. So if we go back into it, we need to see and just pretty much put it down. So where it says will, we'll just press enter and then click off it. There we are. So it says it, and you'll see it snaps if you try to drag it around. So if you click your form, you can resize it. Easy enough. So I'm going to drag some mitt up and put it roughly under it. And I'm going to drag this box up so it's under it too. So we have a small app-ish. So submit, let's do something with it. So first thing I'm going to do is rename the name of the button to submit btn. In fact, button, I always like long names. What that will basically do is it will rename what you call when you code it. So say we want to click it, so double click it, you'll open it. You'll now see it says submit button click here. Private void submit button click. It's just basically the name of the button, what the program uses it. You can call it the exact same thing as your text, but you'll have to get rid of the spaces. And don't use, um, you can't have more than one thing named the same. They've all got to be different, so use numbers if you like. But I'm going to have one submit button on this form. So, And what this will basically do is these up here are basically importing new things which the system can't use already. So if we didn't import any of them, Windows wouldn't know what to do. We couldn't use anything in here at all. So it'll import all the things we need. Everything here will work perfectly. You won't have to import much more in order to do anything. There's odd things you'll have to import, but that's it. We'll cover it. Namespace is the project name. You really don't want to be changing this. So if it's if your project's name YouTube Tuts, keep it as YouTube Tuts. If yours doesn't say that and says something else, it means you've called your project something else. Don't worry about it. Class here is creating something called a class, which we'll go into far in the future, so don't worry about that. Because um, that goes into inheritance and everything. Don't worry. Public form one here, all that does is tells it to load the buttons. So if you didn't have this here and you click play, nothing will happen at all. It just won't do anything. 
initialize components basically what it does is do you remember the designer we clicked on earlier so we go form one designer it tells it to basically load all this that's all it does see initialize component that's all it does loads everything so you need to have that in if yours doesn't say that you've done something very very wrong but hey it's not that bad just restart a new project so let's go into our actual code here private void what that's doing is creating something called a function and by setting it to private first what what it's doing is saying nothing else except this class here can access it that's it nothing else void is another word for function if you've created it in other languages before if not don't worry about it just make sure it says void we'll be using them quite a lot Submit button is the name of whatever variable you're referencing to. So we're using a button, so it's name of the button. It might be button one, button two, button key for I mean I don't know anything. And then after is an event. So what event do we want? So we're having click. So basically whenever you, the submit button is clicked. And don't worry if you this is like, well I don't get it, you'll really pick it up over the next few tutorials. Everything in here is called a parameter in these brackets. If you don't want parameters, you can technically get rid of them like that and it'll still work fine. But the click button won't actually work if you do. You need this event args in. So make sure you keep it in. So let's start. So in here, right here, we're going to start our first code. So what I want to do is when I click this button, is I want to change the text in here to, you just clicked me. In fact, even better ouch you just clicked me and it's really simple so what I'm gonna do is first thing is name the label so what did we call it it's called label one as you can see up there or you can scroll up and call it so we'll just say this main text and the reason I'm not putting capitals on is you can put them I just don't like using it for variables I only like using them for forms which are these here so that's now called main text so in here if we type in main underscore text you see um, Damn, I forgot the name of it again. The thing where it automatically loads what you're doing, I, can't, I always forget the name of it. But anyway, IntelliSense, that's it. It guesses what you want. So if I get rid of some of it, you'll see that it guesses some more. So if I just press enter on one of those, it'll load it. So after this, we can put a dot. And I'll explain to you in a minute why we put a dot. In fact, I'll do it now. So if you imagine, we've got two but Imagine it as folders. That's the way I like to explain it. So you've got a button. Just like we've got, we've got a button. So if you want to go and edit this button, we go into it. So we've typed button 1, we've typed main text, so we go into it. And then what we can do is actually access the properties, just like we did here and changed it. You can scriptingly, or programmatically, whichever word you prefer, go into it and grab the variables. So we're going to go into the main text, which is a label, so label 1, dot text, because the dot goes into the folder kind of thing. And then in here is where we change whatever we want. So if we, back here we type main text dot t e capital T. It'll, if you type lowercase, it'll still find it. Just make sure you get the capitals right. And then we're going to tell it what to set it to. So if we put equals, so main text dot text. So we send the text equals. And then what you need to do now is put your speech marks in here. The reason you need speech marks is because it's called a string. We'll be using strings later. All it is is words. If I was just to type la 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 la, it won't work. It'll throw an error, as you can see. So if you put it in strings, however, it throws no error, except the error at the end, which we're going to fix in a minute. So what we're going to do in here is type in "ouch, stop poking me." That was completely different to what I said I was going to do, but hey. So, after it, if you don't know anything about programming, this is the way I explain it to my little brother who I'm teaching programming to. Anything what's not got a bracket has, an if uh, has a semicolon, end of. There are really, very, very rare occasions you don't, such as namespaces and classes. They don't have it. Pop functions don't have it. So, function, 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 these don't have it. Usings have semicolons on the end. The only other difference, what don't have it, is if statements, or if you're calling a, fun um, a function, like this one. So you'll get used to it, it's really, really simple, I promise you. So just put a semicolon on. If you don't know what a semicolon on it is, it's the one with a dot on the beginning, if I can zoom in, there we are, that's much better for you. So you can see, it's the dot with the comma on the bottom. So if we were to play it now, nothing would happen. 
because we've got to make sure the submit click button is pressed. So we press it, out oh, stop poking me. Perfect. So that's worked. So what we can do is we'll just change one more property. So we've changed it, so when we click that it says out oh, stop poking me. Right? So let's go click the text and let's see what else we can do. Well, in fact I've got a better idea. Let's grab our submit button and change the submit button's text. That'll work too. So I'm not going to change the name because then that'll cause mass errors if you try to change the name because then it'll not understand what to do. But I'm going to change the text. So when we click it and it changes it to out stop poking me, I'm going to type submit button dot text equals um, repoke. Yes. And make sure you make sure you put your semicolon on the end, else you'll get an error. So submit button dot text equals speech mark open re speak that that's a spoke repoke speech mark close bracket. You can also use your apostrophes just like that. They work the exact same. Uh, however, according to this one, it does not. I will show you what that means later. So if we click it, when we click the button, it'll change it to repoke. Repoke. So now we can repoke it again. Easy, right? So that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. Something I want you to do if you want to experiment further is I want you to put some more tools on. Try with the. If I drag this down, you can add a. These are the tools I recommend you trying with first. Checkbox. Really, really simple. You click it, you click it off. The main property of that is checked. If it's checked true, it's got a tick in it. See if you can change that by programming. Buttons, we've already had a look at, but you can experiment further. Um, have a look at list boxes. They're a bit more advanced if you want to take a look. You don't have to. Um, progress bars are a really good thing to look at. They're just like health bars, if you wish. Um, you can change the value on those, so if I say 50, it increases it, 25, or it can go to 100. See if you can experiment with those. Another one I would suggest looking at is text box. This is literally a box you can type in. How cool is that? So that's all I'd really recommend you looking at for the beginning of it. So if you just click play, we can have a look. The list box don't do anything until you add something to it. The progress bar fills up. Checks, check box you can play with. And text box, la 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 la. Easy, yes? So experiment around with those. Um, I really hope you liked it. Please thumbs up, join my Facebook and Twitter down below. I send new stuff daily. New tutorial soon. Um, for anyone who's new, experiment. You may as well learn multiple languages. It's really good too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.